morning. So there is all kinds of great stuff going on in the near future. We are looking towards December 4th with the church fair. And I know that we have a full announcement about that. So I'm just going to sort of drop that there. Because I think, Steve, you were going to talk about that? Or no, you weren't? OK, you're just getting the signs out for everybody. OK, Larry has your message. So we're going to let Larry wait on that message because I'm not quite. Oh. Or, or Heather is, is, hi, Heather. Hi. <laughs> OK, so here's our sign up sheet. A lot of people have gotten back to me already. One thing I have to say for Laura is that from any, anybody from the Women's Society, there's a quick, quick meeting, quick meeting after church about uh, the food, which is going to be to go. So she wants to go over that with you guys. That's one. Two, um, bake sale for people that want to bake things. Everything needs to be packaged, cannot come loose this year. Uh, Anything that's popular, really anything you want to bake is going to sell. <laughs> Don't stress over it. Uh, but you can certainly check in with me and we can try and keep a list, but I'm not really stressed. Just bake things and people will buy it. Uh, as for the fair, it is going to be on December 4th from nine to three. So if you can come and help anytime, that's great. If not, if you want to come and partake, that's great. Tell people about it. We are getting it out on social media, so share that. Otherwise, please come and help us out. I think I got it all. Oh, silent auction. <laughs> so Emily will be sending out an email about silent auction. I um, need help. <laughs> I'm so, a little over right now. So she's gonna regroup and figure it out and send out an email on what she needs, but she will need help for silent auction as well. Okay. Thank you, Sorry. Okay, so so I'll, yeah, sure. Please come on up and in fact, if there's anyone else who knows that you have an announcement that you'd like to make, let me invite you to just kind of queue up. No more line, I see. Okay, so outreach message. Thanksgiving baskets coming up. Um, please remember to shop for non-perishable food items. Help is needed for delivery of the Thanksgiving baskets, uh, which is uh, November 21st after worship. Uh, and we need people to store frozen turkeys. I picked them up at Stu Leonard's on November 18th. That evening, I'll have, be in the parking lot. But you need to let me know because I'm getting nervous about storing all these turkeys. Um, so, and we need a few more boxes, uh, not too big, copy paper size. Thanks, Stu. Please let me know if you can help. So thank you. And that's the 21st that we're bringing all the food in and packing it up, blessing it and sending it out. So thank you for that. And Kate, you have an announcement for us as well? Good morning. This is um, last call for 242 Reach and Point Set of Fundraiser. So if anybody hasn't yet ordered and would like to, please see me after church. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kate. So a couple other things um, just to be aware of. We have got uh, great news this week as we are now able to have COVID vaccinations for children 5 to 11. So we are slowly making our way towards normal. Um, so if you have young people in your life who fall within that age range, uh, do what you can to make sure they get vaccinated soon. It will be good for them and good for all of us. Um, the other thing that you should be aware of is that um, the 21st is harvest sharing. It's also our stewardship Sunday. And you should have somewhere. Do some of you have uh, like bulletin inserts about stewardship? Okay, so some people, okay, I'm seeing some people waving them and other people not waving them. Okay, so when the sermon is boring, read through those or take them home and read through them, your choice. But uh, we are aiming towards the 21st for dedicating our pledges during the worship service. And if you are worshiping with us electronically and can't be here, you can mail those in. 
you know, good old fashioned US mail, you can also email them to us. And there will be a letter going out to the congregation with all of that information in the next few days. So the other thing that I've got before I let you do your thing, Larry, is that I'm not going to be here next week. I'm going to be down in Maryland celebrating my cousin's wedding. Um, just as a regular old person, I'm not even officiating, which is kind of fun. But uh, we will have a, a guest preacher, so I know that you will welcome her and make sure that she has a great King Street experience. I remember when I came here as a guest preacher, um, and if you treat her half as well as you treated me, life will be good. So uh, that's what I've got. Larry? Uh, this is from the fair committee. Please take a lawn sign. Um, they're outside under the maple tree as you walk toward the parking lot. You can stick them in your front yard and advertise. That's it. That's your whole announcement? That's, that's it. That's all I got. We've been waiting this long for yeah, that? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Hey, I was getting butterflies. <laughs> well, after that anti-climax, why don't we have the choir? Please rise as you are able and join in the call to worship. Come, all who are anxious or burdened, this is a time to experience good news. This no, is God's house, and we can meet God here. We are brought together in the family of God. Come with expectancy and anticipation. God is present to greet you and change your life. We are here to remember the ministry of Jesus. We have come to be equipped for our ministry. In our eager waiting, there is fullness of joy. In our preparation for worship, we discover life. Unless God is the shaper of our lives, we live in vain. Unless we view our city as God's own, there is emptiness here. Bye. 
Would you remain standing as we join together in our prayer of invocation. In the security of your love, mighty God, it is well with us. Our work is fulfilling, our relationships reflect your faithfulness, and our ability to trust is strengthened. We are here seeking an extra measure of reassurance, the restoration of our best selves, and the clarification of our responsibilities. You are the builder in whose hands the church can become a community of joy and fulfillment. You keep watch over us, strengthen us to be the church wherever we live and serve. Be known to us now and save all who eagerly await your word. Amen. Will you please be seated? Together as God's people, we pause and we reflect on our lives. We reflect on the ways that we have answered God's call, but also those ways that we have failed to live up to God's intentions for us. We offer God our prayer of confession together, doing so in the knowledge that God is standing ready to forgive. Let us then pray together. All wise God, you know how much we enjoy being honored above others, and how often we resent the special respect others receive. You are aware of the shortcuts we take for our own advantage. You see the ways we pretend to be more than we are. You observe not only our actions, but our as well. We need your help to put away all that is false and to discover our true identity as your children. Lift us up in your forgiving love, we pray. Amen. Dear ones, the good news today and always is that we are a forgiven people who dwell in the grace of God. And so I declare to you today that our sins are indeed forgiven, that once more we are set free to live as God's very own beloved community. Thanks be to God who forgives us and makes us whole. Amen.
Please be seated. In 1914, the Great War broke out in Europe, and during the fighting, millions of people on both sides were killed. Four years later, on the 11th day of November, at 11.11, the guns finally fell silent, because the representatives of both sides of the fight had found a way to make peace. They had signed an agreement called an armistice. And so November 11th became known as Armistice Day. And for many years, we celebrated Armistice Day as the end of that one particular war. Of course, the Great War had to be renamed because we had a second world war. And then we fought in the Korean War. And so in the mid 50s, Armistice Day was renamed as Veterans Day, a day to remember the veterans who've served in our nation's military during wartime and during peacetime. And so today, in church, we pause and we reflect. We give thanks for all of those veterans who have served our nation. We ask God's blessing for them as they move forward in their lives. And we ask that God would help us to live as people of peace so that we can make wars a thing of the past. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for all of the women and men who have served our nation. We give you thanks for those who have served in each branch of the military, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard. And we ask that you would bless each of them. Help us all as we live as people of peace trying to build a future where nations can get along with one another. And we ask it as your children, and in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from Ruth, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, I need to seek some security for you so that it may be well with you. Now, here is our kinsman, Boaz, with whose young women you have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and do, go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, all that you tell me, I will do. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, 
and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. And the New Testament reading is from Mark chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. As he taught, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Would you pray with me? Speak, holy God, that we might hear your words echoing across the ages touching our hearts, and transforming our lives. Amen. So we've got these two stories, one from the book of Ruth and the Hebrew Scriptures, one of only two books in the Hebrew Scriptures that features women. And then we've got a reading from the Gospel of Mark in a story that once again features a woman. So let's start with Ruth. Ruth, this story of a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law who, after they have both experienced the death of their husbands, have traveled together to this little backwater place called Bethlehem. Now, we know Bethlehem as the place where Jesus was born. For the Jews reading this when it was first written, they would have read the story of the grandmother and great-grandmother of King David. Bethlehem is a place where a lot of the stories intersect. But Naomi and her daughter-in-law, Ruth, made their way to Bethlehem. And there, they tried to make a life together. The practice among those who were sowing and harvesting fields in that day was to leave the edges of the fields unharvested, on purpose, not because the, the combine couldn't turn around in short enough distance, but very intentionally, because those field margins were places where the poor could come in and glean, where they could harvest the leftovers so that they could have enough to eat. And so Boaz, the landowner, was doing just that at harvest time. He had his crew of workers who were harvesting the main field, but leaving those edges so that people like Ruth could come in and harvest just a bit of grain so they could have enough to eat. It's one of those 
scriptural practices that we don't see so much today. Though we do see people who work with food rescue missions, we see food banks where on the margins of the grocery store economy, people can still go and find what they need. We, of course, participate in that as we take food for the St. James Food Pantry, as we have our harvest sharing offering in just a couple weeks. But for Boaz, rather than being an episodic event, this preparing the ground for other people's benefit, this leaving some of the harvest behind, was how he did things every single harvest time. And that's where the story gets interesting. Ruth, Naomi are there, doing their bit around the edges of the field. And Naomi realizes that this, this unmarried landowner might be just the guy for her daughter-in-law. That he might be the one to provide not just the security of a single day's worth of gleaning on the edges of the field, but that he might be the one who could provide her stability in her life. And so Naomi takes her daughter-in-law aside and gives her some instructions. Pay attention. When the men are having dinner, but don't go bother them then. But once they have all laid down to sleep on the threshing floor, go up to Boaz, uncover his feet, parenthesis, feet doesn't mean feet. And in the morning, ask him to marry you. It's an interesting story. As she goes in and uncovers his feet, and then the next morning, indeed says, so are you going to marry me or what? And he does. And that relationship, though not started out the way we would usually like to see relationships start out, becomes the beginning of the story of King David, who will come along two generations later. Becomes the beginning of the story of Jesus several generations after that. All because Boaz had left those margins for the benefit of the poor. It benefited him, it benefited Ruth, it benefited all of us as those small gifts accrue. In the gospel reading, we, found, we find more of those small gifts happening. As Jesus is there in the temple watching as people bring their gifts forward, as they present them to the priests. Jesus points out some of those wealthy ones in the long robes, the ones who were so proud of themselves as being faithful people who brought forth their gifts and proclaimed loudly that they were doing good things for God. But that's not the one that Jesus pointed to as the example. Instead, Jesus pointed to a widow bringing her small copper coin, a penny, and making that her gift. Jesus points her faithfulness out, saying that because she has given out of her poverty, even such a small amount is blessed. You should know that Stewardship Sunday is coming up in two weeks. But you should also know 
that the work that we do as a church, while dependent on your faithfulness, is also done no matter how you contribute. I've seen too many times when preachers have taken these texts about generosity and said, that widow gave everything she had. And if you don't give everything you have, then you're not doing your part. I've seen too many people who have been shamed Shamed because they couldn't give as much as someone else could. Shamed because they were made to feel as if their contribution was somehow less than what someone else gave. We don't do that here, ever. One of the things that I'm always conscious of is to have absolutely no idea what anybody contributes financially. Because it's important for me to treat everyone fairly and equally without trying to put a dollar value on anybody's participation. I've seen churches, I've been present in churches where when the offering was received, the practice was for people to bring their offering forward and place it in the plate. And the deacon standing there would say, thank you, Sister Johnson, for that $5. We don't do that. That's not our tradition. However, and I'm going to let all of you be Sister Johnson for just a moment. Thank you for whatever you contribute. Knowing that your contribution of time, talent, treasure is given in love. It's given in faithfulness. It's given in proportion to what you can do. And that the gifts that you give go far beyond dollars and cents. Our stewardship is a stewardship, yes, of finances, but it's really a stewardship of the heart. When you contribute, however you contribute, with the work of your hands, with the prayers that you pour out day after day on behalf of our congregation, with the spirit of love with which we help one another, and turn to help our community. Those gifts are all valid, are all important, and they're all holy. May you, may we, offer our best without trying to put an accountant's stamp on it. May we give knowing that our gifts are holy because they meet the needs of God's people and because they connect us to a world that is in need as well. May your pennies, may your gleanings be blessed for all that they do. Amen. If not, then let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives, for your presence that sustains us, for your presence that calls us to service. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those faithful ones in the past who have done your work with the gleanings and the pennies that they could offer. And we ask that you would help us as we respond as stewards. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the many ways that we are able to serve you, to serve one another, 
and to serve our community. And we ask that you would help us as we continue to look for more ways to be faithful. We give you thanks, O God, for the faithful service offered by our nation's veterans, and we ask your continued blessing for them. We ask, O oh God, that you would be present with Mike as he has a job interview this week, as he seeks to reposition himself in health care. We give you thanks for Erin, starting her new jobs as an EMT and working with New Vance Healthcare. We ask your grace, O oh God, for those who are facing challenges, that you would be with Stephen, who has just learned of his brain cancer. We ask that you would wrap him in your grace and that you would be with all of those who surround him with their love and their care. We ask that you would be with Valerie having neck surgery this week, that you would continue to be with Linda. We pray for Nick and for his wife, Joanne, as they go through his challenges together. We give you thanks, O oh God, for Alan's successful surgery and for your presence in Emily's life. We ask that you would be with her and with all of her family as they go through this time of closure, as they go to court to find a final disposition for Alana's case. We ask your presence, O oh God, with each of us in those needs that we don't even speak out loud, they are so private. In those joys that bubble up within us, yet still can't quite find words. Be with us as we offer you our most intimate prayers in the quiet of this moment. Hear our prayers, O God, for indeed we offer them to you as your children, in trust, in love, and in the name of our brother Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
receive untold blessings from your hand. You set before us the vision of a new heaven and a new earth, inviting us to share in its formation. May the love of Jesus be expressed to others by our sharing of gifts, both person to person and through the investment of dollars to support the ministries of others. This offering of service and sacrifice is the high point of our worship. Please be seated. In our care for others, we find that we are cared for. We find that God cares for us by feeding us at this great feast where all the faithful are gathered together. We come together as God's people served by Christ himself, who calls us friends. As we recall that night so long ago when Jesus gathered with his dearest ones to break bread together. We remember how Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his followers, telling them, this is my body that is broken for you. And in the same way, we recall how after supper, Jesus poured out the cup, giving it to his friends, telling them, this is the cup of God's new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many. As part of that many, we gather, telling the ancient story, sharing the bread and wine together, finding the strength that we need to live our lives faithfully out in the world. Let us then ask God's blessing upon this feast. Holy One, we ask that you would pour out your spirit upon this bread, upon this cup, and upon us. Consecrate these gifts of the earth and the spirit. Consecrate our lives that we might be together, Christ's body in the world. For we ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Our participation in the broken bread is our participation in the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take and eat. Likewise, our participation in the cup of blessing 
is our participation in the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take and drink deeply, all of you. And let us then join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved, let us go forth from this place as God's own people. Let us go forth looking to the needs of others as we live out our faithfulness to God. And as we go, let us go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, and in the power and communion of the Holy Spirit who is with us now and always. Amen. Thank you.